Hello everybody and welcome to chapter 4 which is matter and energy. Today we'll be talking about matter and you guys will be able to classify matter based on its composition and its state. So let's quickly talk about what is matter and this one should this should be a quick review from the previous chapter. We said that matter is anything out there that has some mass and it can take up some space. Um, and remember, the amount of space that anything takes is its volume. So matter necessarily is anything that has mass and it has volume, which is basically everything in the universe. So we can say that matter is everything. Um, and we can classify matter based on its composition and the physical state. So we'll be talking about these two things today. So let's quickly start with... Um, looking at how can we classify matter based on its composition. And this one should be a quick review from the previous chapter. So we said we can classify matter as pure substances or as mixtures. Pure substances can be further classified into elements and compounds. Elements are the basic, simplest forms of matter that can ever exist out there. And we see the monoatomic elements on the periodic table. Why are they monoatomic? Because they only have, they only represent one atom of that specific element. So when you look at carbon, magnesium, sodium, calcium, any of those elements in the periodic table, you only see one atom of those elements. But sometimes out there in the universe, in nature, um, some elements um, combine with an other atom that looks like them. Um, and they make a molecule or a diatomic element. For example, we can have two atoms of a hydrogen element coming together. We can have two atoms of nitrogen element coming together. We can have two atoms of oxygen or fluorine um, or chlorine, bromine, anything like that. So we can have two atoms of the same element coming together and they make a molecule or a diatomic element. But sometimes we can have atoms of different elements coming together. And when that happens, then they make a compound. Okay, so remember, it can have, we can have two, three, four, five, a lot of elements um, in a compound. But if we are looking at a compound that only has two different types of elements, then that would be a binary compound. Alrighty, and then we said that we can classify uh, mixtures further into homogeneous mixtures or heterogeneous mixtures. So homogeneous mixtures are the type of mixtures that have the same form. So remember we said genius means form or kind or type. Um, so if it's homogeneous, that means same kind or same form. So homogeneous mixtures are the ones where you just try to mix two things and they mix completely. So you have one um, fixed solution. Um, so everything is mixed properly. That would be a homogeneous uh, mixture. If you are asked to ever separate a homogeneous mixture, you will use distillation. So there are a lot more procedures out there to separate them, but remember we said that for uh, this um, for this year of chemistry, we'll only um, study this one um, specific uh, procedure or technique that we can use to separate homogeneous mixtures, that is distillation. Um, so remember, distillation involves boiling of uh, the liquid based on its boiling point. So whatever boils off first, it evaporates and then condenses back into its liquid form. Um, and then whatever boils off later, it then um, evaporates, condenses back, and uh, condenses back into its liquid form. So distillation depends on the boiling points of uh, the things that you have in your mixture or solution. Heterogeneous mixtures, on the other hand, are when you have different forms, which means you see some sort of layers, you have a liquid thing with some solid particles in there. Um, so basically, you, you know that it's a mixture, but your things are not mixed properly. So that's uh, what represents a heterogeneous mixture. So if you are ever asked to separate that mixture, the two procedures that we looked at to separate uh, heterogeneous mixtures um, were filtration and magnetism. So filtration um, is basically just based on the particle size. So um, if you have a liquid um, 
or something that it has um, a smaller particle size, that thing will pass through your filter paper and uh, the, 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 other, um, the other thing in your mixture that has a larger particle size will stay on your filter paper. And then we can use magnetism, which means if you have um, anything in your mixture that can be attracted to magnets, then we can use magnetic activity to separate those things. So that was how we can um, classify matter based on its composition. Now, we can also classify matter based on its physical state. So the three types of um, physical states, most common types of physical states are uh, solid, liquid, or gas. These are the three forms in which matter can exist. Um, solids are normally represented by um, the small s, Liquids are represented by this small l, and then gas is represented by this small g. Okay, so notice how the particles are arranged in um, a solid substance, in a liquid substance, and then in a gas substance. You have a lot more particles in solids, um, and they are very organized. Uh, you have, you still have a significantly a larger number of particles in liquids as well, but they are not quite organized. And then in gases, you have really less particles and they are not organized at all. So let's talk about some of the properties uh, that we can compare for these three states of matter. So first of all, let's look at the shape. Well, solids have a fixed shape, always. Liquids do not have a fixed shape. We can never have a liquid that has its own shape. It just takes the shape of whatever we pour that liquid into. So if, if you pour your water in a water bottle, then it will just take the shape of that bottle. Um, and then gas, gases also have no fixed shape. Volume, well, solids do have a fixed volume. They do take up a fixed amount of space. Uh, liquids also have a fixed volume, okay? We can definitely, certainly measure the volume of liquids. Uh, gases, uh, on the other hand, do not have a fixed volume. Um, their volume cannot be measured. So if we talk about the distance between the particles, then look at the particles in um, a solid substance. They are very organized. They are arranged properly. Um, so we cannot, uh, the distance between those particles is um, quite small. Um, the distance between the particles of a liquid substance um, is, we can say, moderate. It's not very large. It's not very small. It's kind of in the middle. However, the distance between the particles of uh, a gas or a gaseous substance um, is a lot. How can these particles move for these different types of substances? Well, if you have a solid substance, the particles, because they are so arranged, because they are so organized, they do not have any space to move. So the maximum that they can do is uh, they can vibrate. If you really apply some sort of force or um, electricity or anything like that. Um, so the maximum that they can ever do is vibrate but still stay at their own um, place. But uh, the particles in the liquid can, however, move easily from one place to the other place. So if you um, let water out on the floor, it can easily go from one place to the other place. Um, and same thing with the gases, they can also uh, move freely and the particles of uh, the gaseous substances move at a super, super, super high speed. Compressibility, if you're given a solid and you try to compress that, which means you um, really exert pressure on that and you try to change the shape, um, it's pretty much impossible to do that. Um, that's why we say that solids are non-compressible. Um, liquids, it depends. Sometimes you can um, uh, compress them, but very, very, very slightly. Um, gases, however, are highly compressible. So uh, because they have a lot of space between their particles, so if you exert pressure on the gases, um, there is a high probability that you can move those particles closer and you can compress that gas in a smaller amount of space. And finally, the entropy, which is entropy is how much disorder or disorganization do we have between the particles of these substances. So solids um, do not quite have 
any disorganization for the most part. So we say that entropy is very low. Um, liquids have um, a moderate entropy and then gases have a very high entropy because there's a lot of disorganization. So this picture represents um, three different states of matter for water. So water is a compound because this is how we write water, H2O. And I hope you guys remember this from the previous chapter. Um, so water is H2O. It has two atoms of hydrogen element and one atom of oxygen element. So basically, we are combining two different elements to make a compound of water. So when water is in its solid state, remember solid state is represented by a small s. Um, so when we write water and when we have to say that water is in its solid state, we'll just say H2O h2o and then in the subscript we'll have this small s so that will represent that water is in a solid state which will be ice um this is how all of those uh, the particles of water will be arranged so you guys see how all of them are very organized the space between these particles is um very less um and it's kind of hard to change the shape of ice but when ice melts and water converts into its liquid form, um, you guys can now see that the particles are not um, very organized. They do have some space between them and uh, the shape can also be, there's no fixed shape for liquid water. And then this is what water looks like in its gaseous form. So you have all of uh, the particles are super, super far away from each other. We have a lot of space between the particles um, and they can um, easily be um, compressed and they can easily change shape. So finally, um, there's another form of, uh, there's another state of matter that you guys can sometimes see um, and that will be this. So you'll have anything, let's say you'll have um, NaCl, NaCl, which is sodium chloride, that's your table salt, and then you'll have this small Aq at the bottom. So whenever you see that, this is going to represent an aqueous solution. So all that this is telling you is that you are taking your table salt and you have dissolved that into water. So Aq means whatever solid you are given, that solid dissolved in water. Alrighty, so that's what um, aqueous state of matter means. So that was it for this part of the chapter, and I'll see you guys next time.